Okay, so this horse is a little more typical to what most of my students ride. He is slightly on the lazier end of the spectrum, which makes him wonderfully safe and predictable and quite simple for most people to get on and learn what a horse feels like underneath them. The thing that is tricky about a horse like this though is that they teach a rider to work too hard. They lull a rider into being a little bit aggressive with their aids. So if I think of that scale of pressure that I like to use being on a one to four range, a lot of times horses like this will teach people to ride at like a two or a three all the time instead of coming back down to a, a zero and then a one where you want your horse responding from a very light aid, the riders just get a little bit mm, feeling like they have to make the horse go all the time. So I want to look a little bit about how we can promote a better amount of self-carriage and self-motivation from the horse without the rider working so hard. I should not be panting when I'm done riding this horse. So I'm going to come back to the basic aids I was working on earlier. Um, I want to be able to apply a very light aid and get a quick response. At the walk, that's going to be what I call alternating leg aids. It's a very simple concept and it di differentiates the walk aid from the trot aid. If I say to someone, how do you make your horse trot? And they say, I squeeze both legs. And then I say, how do you make your horse walk forward? And they say, I squeeze both legs. I say, well, how do you teach your horse the difference between the two? And they usually say, I squeeze harder when I want them to trot. And I say, I don't want you to squeeze harder. I want your horse to go from the lightest aid possible at all times. So what I want is a little differentiation between um, how I ask my horse to walk forward and how I ask them to trot on. When I'm walking along, and everybody who rides horses can feel this, there's a little swing in our hips. As the horse's hips move, our hips move as well. And if we can be very relaxed in our lower back, in our leg, we can feel that swing reach all the way down into our lower leg. If it's hard for you to feel that, a nice way to, to work on it is to actually let your leg drop out of the stirrup. There's a little left, right, left, right, left, right feel to it. And if I were to it, add a little pressure, when my leg is naturally swinging to the horse's side, I'd create an alternating pressure, a left, right, left feeling. Whenever I add a little bit of light, left, right, left, my horse should go forward. That's the typical thing I see with a lot of riders. And so then they apply the pressure harder and the horse goes, eh, not quite yet. And then they apply the pressure a little harder and the horse goes and they're like, okay, now I wanna keep them going. So they keep applying that pressure. What I say is what we need to do is add the alternating leg aid. And if the horse doesn't go from the lightest pressure, add that quick little correction. So with a lazy horse, a horse that's a little less motivated maybe, what I might do is go from a one, a light, light pressure, to a three, like a little sharp, hello, you missed something. And the moment they go, what, what was that? My leg is off and I go back to the light pressure and give them the opportunity to hear it again. 